What's good, gang? How we doing out there? Cheers. Hope we all all right. It's past the Zen. We're about to go through Matthew chapter 6. Or sorry, chapter 5. Last session, <laughs> we went through verses 1 to 16. Today, I'm going to start back at verse 13. So we're going to double back a little bit. And we're just going to go down to verse 20. So seven verses. Um... Let's lock in, grab your Bibles, let's do it. So it says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Verse 17, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I truly tell you until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I think that's kind of interesting. There's like levels to this. But anyway, verse 20. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whew. That's kind of heavy. Unless you're more righteous than the teachers of the law, you can't enter heaven. What are you saying, Jesus? I thought you were just talking about be meek. Now you're saying I got to be righteous? Yes but not self-righteous. This is a different type of righteousness he's talking about. First, we go salt of the earth and light of the world. Um, without getting too deep, I mean, salt is what gives something flavor, correct? So salt of the earth is in reference to what our lives are supposed to be to those around us. Light of the world is supposed to be a metaphor for... Remember yesterday I was talking about how this world is kind of spiritually decrepit? <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of dark out here despite you know it's really sunny today to be fair it's a beautiful one but there is a need for people to let their lights as in their auras become more palpable for those around them so that they can grab hold of something it says when you have a light you don't put a ball over it you don't hide it you you let it shine the thing is today letting your light shine can be calling attention to yourself and that could be kind of scary because people know what's out there it's a lot of folks that don't want lights shining and so for you to let your light shine is in fact an act of rebellion but we do it anyway because that's what he calls us to now the second part of this it says i haven't come to abolish the law i've come to fulfill it sometimes i think of um like the old testament or the Torah books or like the old, the, 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 the Ten Commandments and stuff like that. Almost like God's original operating system for humanity, right? It's like, it's like I have a phone, right? And it's like, what if this was, uh, this is an Android, but if it was an iPhone, for example, they had iOS 1, iOS 2, iOS 3. Those are the old operating systems. Sometimes I imagine God created us with this, you know, grand vision in mind in the Garden of Eden and then realize like, oh wow, there's a lot of bugs in this source code. <laughs> All right, let's update. iOS 1, boom. All right, still kind of wonky. iOS 2, boom. And so throughout the Old Testament, we see Israel continuing to fall back and mess up and kind of poo-poo God's ultimate law. And so essentially he was like, all right, these people can't do what I had wanted them to do so i'm gonna send myself <laughs> in the form of my son christ to essentially do it all and it's it's weird but it's also like amazing because 
now we have access to the law fulfilled. Like the Holy Spirit is supposed to be this version of inspiration that allows us in our lives to become the law. But that can almost be pretext for people to take that and then pretend that there are no rules. And that's not the case either. So this is almost like a measuring stick. Don't like do away with what is good. But at the same time, let's step into something new. And stepping into something new means crowning ourselves with the righteousness of Christ. And that's what I'll end with today. We can't be as righteous as the teachers of the law. That's almost the point of him saying that. We can't be as righteous as the Pharisees or the Sadducees. We can't, we can't possibly be the best rule followers of all time because we're human beings. We're broken. And so what he's actually saying is he's inviting us into his perfection. It's almost like covering yourself with the umbrella or canopy of, of, a, of a higher authority. Some people adopt the authority of this world. And so if they mess up or they miss that, somebody comes along and say, hey, I can you know help you out in this way. And so maybe they feel like, yeah, if I just get with this program, then I'm safe. But the reality is that every single program is subservient to the program, right? And so what God is saying, what Jesus is saying, is if you subscribe to my program, you will be, in fact, righteous. And it won't be this weird self-righteousness because you obeyed all the rules. It'll be a more humble righteousness because you know that it was through grace that you were saved. Yeah, I'm going to end there. Lord, thank you so much for today. I pray for all my friends, all my brothers and sisters on the other side of the screen. Touch them right now in a super way. Whatever is ailing them, heal them mentally, physically, spiritually. And I just pray that you direct their paths to begin to see the truth in your word. Begin to understand the light that they are and the salt that they can bring. Help us today, oh God, to be better vessels of your word and your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Gang, see you later.